Hi, this is David Dewar. Welcome to week 10 of my video game project challenge. This week's project doesn't need a lot of introduction. Uh, you can see on the video that I tried to make Pac-Man this week, a game that I played a lot of. Anyways, let's just jump right into the demo, and if you're interested, I'll show you how I made it afterwards. All right, here's this week's project, and as you can see, it bears a little bit of resemblance to the original game. I can uh, move around, eat pellets. Uh, there are ghosts. Uh, they're moving around. I have these power pellets I can hit, and I can't eat the ghosts yet, so I just go right through them, but that's something I could build in if I had more time. So as I began this week's challenge, I've always enjoyed playing Pac-Man, but I didn't really understand it at a programmatic level until I started to take a look at it. and. There's some really interesting things in this game. Uh, just the movement of the ghosts and whatnot. Uh, they follow certain rules. Uh, like one, one of the ghosts, uh, Blinky, will chase after Pac-Man. And another ghost will chase after that ghost. Uh, and another one tries to uh, ambush Pac-Man. So it's really, uh, really quite interesting. And I realized the, the real beauty of the design as I tried to replicate it uh, in this week's project. So building the map was kind of interesting. I had to think about it for a while, and then I thought maybe the best way to do it is to actually build it up as a 3D map and then uh, have a camera on uh, top of the action. And so I took the screen cap from the original video game into Maya, and I painstakingly uh, laid it out and tried to map it so that there was a, a known number of centimeters between uh, the different uh, uh, the different um, bits of the maze, you know, had some real trial and errors with getting that all to to line up. But then I did, and I did as best I could. And one of the things to note is on one side it's a little bit different than another. And when I'm trying to line up the movement of the ghosts in the game, uh, it proved to be a little bit of a challenge, as as you might have uh, seen if you look really closely at the video. So I had this idea that what if I actually have a, a plane, uh, select those different cells that make up the map, and then extrude them up into a, uh, a 3D kind of view, uh, which I did. So we're taking a look at that here. Uh, there's another view of it. And this is it in the game after I've applied uh, different coloring to the, the bevels that went around the edges. And I've applied a little bit of what they call emissive quality to the light. So it actually is brighter than bright. It, it glows. And there's uh, uh, so that's quite interesting. I had to use that with uh, different parts of the game. Um, so the game itself, actually, I built it as a 3D game, uh, but it just looks 2D with the where the camera is. And you can see some of the aberrations on the edges of the game, just based on where the camera is. Uh, the ghosts move a little bit side to side. They don't quite line up. Um, so that's just one of the aspects of how I, I shot this. I could have used uh, what they uh, call an orthographic camera. They would flatten everything out, uh, but that didn't look quite as nice. So I had lots of interesting challenges throughout this. This is uh, one of the little glitches I had along the way. And building the ghost was fun. Uh, so I started off with a, I think a sphere and then extruded it out, uh, started carving away bits of it. And then um, in many of the projects, they didn't spend the time creating a, what they call a UV map. So UV map is what you'd use to actually uh, get the texture, the coloring on the different characters. So this is what I brought into Photoshop and I kind of lined up where the eyes are. And since the ghosts were pretty much one color, it was fairly easy. So, um, you know, here I just put the eyes in the right place uh, using layers in Photoshop. And uh, that's the kind of rendered view of the, the ghost. So I thought it'd be interesting to show you how I brought uh, Pac-Man to life, just to give you an idea, just in case you're interested in doing it yourself. And here we are in Maya. I can create a sphere. And that sphere's not visible because it's only one centimeter by one centimeter, so I can make that bigger. So that's uh, now 200 centimeters long. I can have more success if I go into one of the other views, so I'm just going to switch into the front view here zoom back so I can see it uh, and then I can select uh, vertices 
And there's a little bit of a trick to get all these things to line up if I actually scale it. There we go. And then I can bring that all together there. And that's the top half of Pac-Man. And then I can switch into object mode. Duplicate that. And I can rotate it. And there we're beginning to have the beginning parts of it, as you can see. Let's go into the other view. Um, so we can give this a material, assign a new material to it. In this case, we've got a lot of choices here in Maya. Uh, we use Blin. Um, make it yellow. Give it a name. And then we can apply that material to the bottom part. And there we go. We've got the basics of Pac-Man uh, coming together there. And if we want to uh, animate it, uh, basically what we can use is uh, keyframes. So I'll set a uh, keyframe here. I'll have 200 frames. I'll set a keyframe here. And then I'm going to uh, rotate this. Oops. And then we can rotate it. Maybe there. Uh, and then we can animate this. So you can basically see that uh, there's some animation going on there, and we can animate the bottom part as well select it set a keyframe set another keyframe go back to the same spot there and rotate that down and then animate it and of course in the game it animates a lot faster but this gives you an idea of how uh, i created pac-man for the game this is my week 10 project i hope you come back for week 11